Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, a criminal scientist has discovered a method of traveling back through time. He has taken Buzz and Happy back 14 centuries and has left them on a desolate seacoast on the planet Earth. I just can't realize that we're back in the year 1591. Let's make the best of it. After all, our ancestors did. Then we're stuck here in the past forever? Perhaps there's one slight chance of getting back. Yeah? Well, what is it, sir? Hey, what's the matter? I feel strange. Everything's going black. What's that sound? You like them? Commander. Hey, what's happening to us? Commander. We'll be back in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol story, The Time Pirates. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Ah, Nestle's new coconut bar. That's for me. You have to eat one to believe there could be such a wonderful flavor combination. I just imagine. Thick, rich, smooth milk chocolate crammed to the edges with fresh toasted coconut. Such fun to eat, too, because it gets crisper with every bite. Care to add anything to that, Happy? Happy. Could that happen with you, please, answer? Oh, well, golly, Commander, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what happens to me when you start talking about Nestle's new coconut bar? I just close my eyes and leave this planet. Yes, sir, I imagine I'm eating one right then and there. Mmm, I can just taste that sensational, creamy, rich chocolate and all that super coconut. It's so crisp, so delicious, so... There I go. Well, that's the way it is, Commander. And there's only one cure for it. Oh, and what might that be? Oh, I just got to eat a Nestle's coconut bar, of oh, course. Oh, well, that seems like a good idea. For you, for me, for all space patrollers, too. A gang, why don't you find out for yourselves? Treat yourself to a brand new, brand new coconut bar. You'll really go for it. Everybody goes for Nestle's, Commander. Wonderful milk chocolate, almond chocolate, and crunchy crunch bars. And naturally, the new coconut bar in the red and cream-colored wrapper. Smoking rockets. Nestle certainly makes the very best chocolate. And now, today's space patrol adventure, The Time Pirates. Roaring toward the outer reaches of the solar system, a spaceship arcs over the Neptune orbit, its blazing rockets thrusting it onward at an ever-increasing pace. Far behind the drawing slowly nearer is the Terra 5. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy, their minds and bodies aching under the strain of several G's acceleration, relentlessly follow the blurred circle of flame from the rockets of the fleeing ship. They're nearly up to star drive velocity. They cut over into hyperspace, we'll never get there. Scarno is taking an awful chance to get into hyperspace in that ship. I'd better warn him. He's ignored all your other warnings, sir. Is that a fair chance to escape? Maybe you'll listen to reason now. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Ryland Scarno aboard star drive cruiser JS-14. Corey to Scarno. Scarno, this is urgent. Acknowledge. Someone calling the great Dr. Scarno. Scarno, listen. Cut your rockets and surrender. Now, Commander, why should I do that? My ship is nearly up to star drive velocity. You're taking an awful chance, Scarno. That ship's in bad shape mechanically and electronically. I knew that when I stole it from Jupiter City Spaceport. Your hyperspace transition effector is probably out of alignment. When you cut into star drive, there's no telling what will happen to you. One thing is sure. You won't be able to follow you may think the ship's worth stealing, but is it worth risking your life for? You forget that I'm an expert on hyperspace theory and star drive mechanisms. If you don't value your own life, think of that man with you. Loma has already made his choice. Is that right, Hugo? Yeah, I'm speaking with Dr. Scarno. You heard, Loma. Goodbye, Commander. We're kicking at a star drive. Scarno, wait. Scarno. That's no use, sir. Look, the ship vanished. Scarno's in hyperspace. He got away. But sooner or later, you will have to return to the solar system. Provided you can, you can. You go back to Terra and alert all units from Mercury to Pluto to watch for him. In the control compartment of the stolen star drive cruiser, 
Dr. Scarno and his assistant, Hugo Glomer, have blacked out as the ship makes the sudden transition from regular three-dimensional space into hyperspace. At last, Scarno regains his senses and shakes his companion. Now listen. We're coming out of Starlight. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got to hike in sea streets of light through the viewport. I'll set up the astrogation instrument. We should emerge about 30 billion DUs beyond Pluto. There's the sun blazing off our starboard side. There's the Earth. I know it's the Earth. See? There's its moon. It can't be the Earth. On the wrong side of the sun for this time of year. Your astrogation instrument must be off. Nonsense. We're not in hyperspace now. Mars type planet. It's 94 degrees off. I still say... Shut up, Hugo. Let me think. All those planets are off. In the exact proportion of the periods of revolution around the sun. In hyperspace has no relation to ordinary space time. For us, time stood still while the solar system aged six months. Look at Earth. There's your proof. Uh, I don't understand. The Earth has gone halfway around its orbit. That's half a year. Six months gone out of our lives. Six months. It's a multiple of six months. A year and six months. Five years and six months century in six months. No. No. You're a new type of explorer, Hugo. When we land on Earth, we'll know exactly where we are. But we won't know when. There's no doubt about it now, Hugo. It's Earth, all right. The land mass is the Florida Peninsula. City. What happened to the city? And there are no farms, no spaceports, just forest and wilderness. We'll know the answer after we land. I've examined the settings on the hyperspace computer. I think I know what went wrong. The circuits that control the time coordinates are out of alignment. Can you fix them? Yes, I think so. Oh, there's where we'll land. Near the mouth of that river. Exactly. I'm all confused. Tell me what's going on. Later, Hugo. Just keep your head and trust me. Buzz and Happy have returned to Space Patrol headquarters on Terra after their futile pursuit of Dr. Skarner. Skarner will probably try to contact some of his accomplices by hyperspace communication, Happy. Our monitoring stations notify us if any unidentified signals are picked up. Yeah, but we can't get a fix on Skarner from the hyperspace signal. And it'll probably be in code, too. Yeah, we know he's alive. You may be able to locate his confederates and set a trap. I've already got a line on one likely suspect. Who, sir? Scarno's had dealings with a third history. He operates a small private spaceport in the Andes Mountains in South America on the planet Earth. Mm. Good hideout, all right. This tie in a vista with Dr. Scarno may be the break we need. First, we know that Scarno has given a spaceport to repairs. And it does need repairs, though. Yes, immediately. In fact, Scarno may have set a hyperspace vector for Earth when he cut in the sky. Well, he may be at Bristol Spaceport right now, repairing the star drive controls. He isn't there a good chance he'll show up there very soon. Happy we're blasting off for Earth to check up on Mr. Bristol. Meantime, Dr. Scarno and Hugo Glomer have landed their ship near the mouth of a river. Carrying empty water containers, they climb a grassy knoll that slopes down toward the sandy beach a quarter of a mile away. Look, Doc. I kept quiet all the time you were working on a hyperspace computer. Now, will you tell me what year we're in? <laughs> I don't know whether your mind can stand the shock, Hugo. But first, let me assure you, I've repaired the computer and the control mechanism. We can return what? to our proper period of time when it reaches you. All right. Let's have a look. Remember you asked what happened to the cities of North America? They have not been destroyed. They have not yet been built. Now, in the latter part of the 16th century. We've gone back into the past? More than 1,400 years back. From the 30th century back to about 1591. But can we return? Are you sure you can get us back to the 30th century? It's the rush. We're safe here. Amanda Clory hasn't been born yet, and won't be for 14 centuries. Between the river, 
see, and there was goods over there. We'll find plenty of fish and game to eat. Oh, just, I know. I, I give up. Dragging the rowboat up on the sand. I see that ship. It's going to be. The rest of it is hidden by the ship. Where's your head, little girl? You can see. Sailing ship. Not true. Steamships won't be invented for more than 200 years. It's a Spanish galleon, Hugo. Spanish galleon? Now, do you believe this is 1591? It could be a dream. It's real, all right. There's no one climbing out of the rowboat now. They're carrying something heavy, a box of some kind. Some shadows. Any of the binoculars? No. Hugo, the pirates. They're burying them. Treasure that's stolen from other ships. They're burying it here. Doc, Doc, you're talking awfully strange. Well, what were they doing? Then they wheel back to the ship and sail away. Wheel, take it up. What good is it going to do us? Don't you see? get back to the 30th century. The pirate treasure will solve all our financial problems. We'll pay Phil Bristol to help us fix up the spaceship. We're rich. We're rich. Elsewhere, Buzz and Happy are now at the remote spaceport operated by Phil Bristol in the Andes Mountains. They've been questioning Bristol for some time with no results. No, Commander, I haven't heard anything from old Doc Scarno for more than a year. Frankly, that suits me fine. I don't want to get involved in any of his deals. I see. And what about his pal, Hugo Glomer? Glomer? I've never heard of him. Now, look, Commander, I can't imagine why you came here. This spaceport's strictly on the up and up. I pick up a few emergency jobs, all legitimate. Mm-hmm. Well, this though, we'd like to look around a bit. What's in that hangar over there at the south end of the port? Oh, just an old pup. Waiting for repairs. Get and I'll take a look at it. It's nothing to see, believe me. What's the matter, Mr. Something out there you don't want us to see? Why, no. No, of course not. It's just. Get, get your hands up. Both of you. At the Scarno. Yes, Commander. This will take the weapons. I don't want them to give Hugo an excuse to shoot them. Okay, Scarno. But why not shoot them? We can't let them go. I have other plans. We'll dispose of them permanently. And yet, we won't have them again. Pieces I showed you. Spanish coins. What about? We'll take Corey and the cadet back where we got the treasure and leave them there. Come on, gentlemen. Where are you taking us, Scarlet? Oh, you like it? The sun is warm and the sea is beautiful. And someday a ship may come along and take you aboard. And then we'll be right back on your trail, Scarlet. No, you won't. The ship, if any, will be a Spanish galleon. Galleon? Oh, that be safe to be forever. We're going back 1,400 years. Being marooned, Corey, like the ancient pirates marooned their enemies. Marooned in time. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, do you recognize this sound? Why, that's somebody drinking Nestle's quick, Captain Chico. How can you be so sure, Tony? Easy. A drink has to be awful good to drink it down to the very last bubble like that. And Nestle's quick sure is. Why, it's so rich and chocolatey, it tastes just like those wonderful Nestle's chocolate bars. Well, I follow you there. Now, if a drink is hard to make, you usually drink it kind of slow, so it'll last long. But that sound was somebody drinking fast. And on account of you can make yourself a glass of Nestle's quick so fast, you start all over again. Us kids don't mind drinking it down in the room. So it had to be Nestle's Quick. Tony, you're absolutely right. Nestle's Quick is so quick. In fact, it makes itself. You just pour out your glass of cold milk. That's right, the milk comes first. Then add two teaspoons of rich Nestle's Quick. And down it goes, mixing all the way. You just give it a little swish with your spoon, and it's ready to drink. There's one more reason, Captain. Oh, what's that? Well, I've made that sound so many times myself. I know it by heart. Want me to show you? Shoot. Okay. 
I'll make my glass of bread. Just add two spoonfuls of my glass of milk. Now once around with the spoon, in with the straws, and here goes. Well, sure enough. That's the happy drinking you get only when you get delicious Nestle's Quick in the bright brown and yellow can. Try some right away. Quick makes milk taste like a million. You'll see. That's Nestle's Quick. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, the Time Pirates. At a spaceport high in the Andes Mountains on the planet Earth, the port manager, Phil Bristol, tells Buzz and Happy... He knows nothing about Dr. Scarno and Hugo Glomer, who have stolen the Star Drive ship. Suddenly, Scarno and Glomer emerge from hiding, disarm the space patrollers, and threaten them with a strange fate. Buzz and Happy are to be taken back 1,400 years in time and left on a deserted coast of America in the late 16th century. Well, gentlemen, I see you've survived your first trip back through time. We are now back in the year 1591. That's funny. You don't look a day younger. You're still skeptical. My friend Glomer is bringing the ship in for landing on Earth. Then you will see for yourself. How did you discover this trick of time travel? It was an accident. The hyperspace computer was out of adjustment. Now I can control it. However, to avoid error, I'm returning to the exact moment of time of our previous trip. Are you going to leave us here? Yes. I'll be rid of you. Yet I'll have committed no crime. <laughs> There's no law against transporting people back in time. Is there, Commander? Not yet. Sparno, how long after the pirates buried the treasure did you and Hugo dig it up? We waited till they got back aboard their galleon and sailed out of sight. About two hours, I suppose. Why? Do you know the exact time they buried it? It was noon. Yes, the sun was almost directly overhead. What are you getting at? The treasure existed under the sand from noon until you took it away two hours later. What would happen if, on this trip, you dug it up one hour earlier? Uh, I'd have two treasures. Huh? But there's only one treasure. Yes, it's aboard this ship. But we're going back in time. We'll see the pirates bury their gold at noon, like rerunning a film. But this time we'll get there sooner. Beat ourselves to it, so to speak. We'll have two identical treasures. Uh, on second thought, it won't work. No, Scott. It will work. It's got to. But common sense... Common sense. Common sense tells you that you couldn't possibly be here in the year 1591 because you're not even born. Still, you're here, aren't you? Yes, but there's only one of each of us. There isn't a Commander Corey here in 1591 and another Commander Corey up ahead in the 30th century. Try to talk me out of my great idea. You want to dig up the treasure after I blast off so you can live like kings here in the 16th century. Well, I'll just kill that little scheme. Hugo and I will get the treasure again. And you two are going to help. Dr. Scarno carefully repeats the exact landing procedure of his previous trip of the year, 1591. Then, concealed by bushes on the knoll, the four men from the 30th century watch the pirates bring their rowboat ashore, bury their treasure chest, and return to their galleon lying at anchor in the quiet waters of the bay. Finally, Scarno rises to his feet. Take a gig. And remember, one false move and, and you'll die before your time. It's been a good day, Doc. Shut up, Hugo. Hey, Doc. What happens if those pirates see us from their ship? They can't. The alien has sailed around the boat. Anyway, what did they do about it? Right, dig, dig faster, you two. Oh, what's the rush? We've got 14 centuries to dig this up. It's there. We uncovered the chest. Hurry, Corey. Throw away that sand. It would. Just like you said it would not. We got two sets of treasure. Uh, I think I can lift it out now. Don't know who's shoveled. Call out the chest. It's sure heavy. Hugo, I've got another idea. You can pick up the same treasure twice. Why not three times or four times? Huh? Come back again. Fifteen or twenty minutes early. Well, uh, you're going to be bumping into the pirates if you keep it out. Keep it. Fill in that hole, level it out smooth, and don't forget the shovel. Glory. Right. Yes. Get that treasure to the ship. Hey, 
Hugo, unlock the compartment two. Put the chest in there with the other one. Well, hurry up. This thing isn't getting any lighter. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Corey. Take the chest in the compartment and set it down by the other treasure. Wow. Hey. What other treasure? Doc. Uh, Doc, look. The other chest is gone. What? That's impossible. Maybe you and I have the keys of this compartment. You go. What are you trying to pull? What do you mean, what am I trying to pull? Are you accusing me of stealing the gold? You didn't do it. Who did? I've got a notion that... So got you covered. You better listen. Corey has just been waiting for us to get into a private scrap so he and the cadet can jump us. Well, where did you ever get an idea like that? In fact, you probably planned this whole thing. How could they? They are locked up in another compartment, except when they were with us on the beach. Corey's figured out some trick about this time travel effect. What is it, Corey? Where's the first treasure we dug up? Right here. Happy and I just set it down. It's the second ship. Look, one object can't be in two places in the same instant. The instant the ship returned to the year 1591, the treasure vanished from the compartment. And this time we dug up the same chest as before. And we have no sooner, that's it. Of course, if you took the chest ahead to the 30th century and left it there, and then came back. Oh, you got it. You see, Scarno, our spaceship is a time machine. If the gold isn't in the time machine, it couldn't return to 1591. It would stay in the future for Bristol. It's a possibility, Stone. Yes, it's worth trying. Have you thought this up so we take you back to the 30th century? You're mistaken. Corey, you and the cadet are staying here. Hugo, get them out of the ship. We're blasting off. Left behind on the desolate coast in the year 1591. Buzz and Happy watched the ship blast off into space on its strange journey into the future. Accepting their situation bravely, Buzz suggests they explore their surrounding and search for food. Right now, several hours later, the space patrollers walk along the wet sand of the water's edge. Since we haven't any weapons to hunt with, our best bet is to try to dig up some clams. Yeah. Looks like there are a couple of Robinson Crusoe's over here. Huh? Let's try this spot. Let's start digging up. Why are you watching the sky? Oh, I'm looking for Skarno's ship. He ought to be back by now. Yeah, they turned here and blasted off again, Paul. Will we have seen him? That when he returns, he'll have set his time selector to about noon at this day in 1591. To us, it's now four hours later. The arrival of the pirates, Skarno's return, and both events are past history for us. I just can't realize that we're back in 1591. Oh, I have to get used to it. Let's make the best of it. After all, our ancestors did and you're stuck here in the past forever? Stop the past now. It's our present. However, there's one possible thing. One slight chance of getting back to the future. Yeah? Hey, hey, it feels strange. Everything is going back. What's that sound? Yeah. Oh, hey, Commander, what's happening to us? Commander, where are you? As Scarno lands his spaceship in the now familiar hollow between the low rolling hills, the sun is high overhead. The Spanish galleon rolls gently at anchor in the bay, its pirate crew unaware that pirates of the future are waiting to steal their plunder. All right, Hugo, get the shovels out of the tool compartment. Okay, Doc. Uh, what time did we hit the beach this day? An hour and 15 minutes past noon. Uh, you even suppose there's any chance of... Corey and the cadets spoiling our show. How could they? Four hours into the future. They could no more interfere with us than you could change last week's weather. Uh, I see. Uh, you know, I have a feeling that this time it's going to work. The treasure we left with Bristol will stay in the 30th century. And now, we take up the duplicate the pirates are about to bury. And we have two treasures. Yes, yes, I know. I'll get the show. Get the no happy. I'll handle you, Doug. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, Hap, take it away. Yes, sir. Corey, where did you come from? From the compartment where you had us locked up the first time. How did you get in? 
We were on the beach. There, then all of a sudden there was a whirring sound. Things got black, and then boom, we were in your ship. Uh, uh, what made it happen? As Cardinal said, you were four hours into the future. We were. But our existence in the year 1591 first began when your ship emerged from hyperspace, when you first brought us here. In that instant of time, we were in the ship. So when you returned to that instant, we were turned to you. Yeah, only this time the compartment door wasn't locked. I should have shot you before we blasted him. That wouldn't have helped you. Help. You were part of the space-time equation for this instant of the year 1591. Sure. As far as the 30th century is concerned, those pirates have been dead for hundreds of years. And yet, when you clean in on this day in 1591, there they are, real as life. On your feet, Scarno. You're returning to the 30th century to get your pal Bristol. Under Commander Corey's watchful eyes, Scarno sets the hyperspace vector for a return to the 30th century. Landing at the spaceport in the Andes, Buzz leaves Happy in the ship to guard the two prisoners while he goes after Bristol. Now, just relax, boys. You'll have company in a few minutes. It's all your fault, Scarno. You were so smart. Look, Hugo, you're still in good shape. So you'll go to a criminal rehabilitation center for a while. When we come out, you'll still have the treasure we left with Bristol. Yeah? Will Corey let us have it? You have to. Pirates buried it and we dug it up. Two owners have been dead for centuries. It's ours by right to discovery. Oh, Commander, did you find Bristol? No, it happens gone. And so is his ship. The treasure. What about the treasure? I checked the hiding place you told me about it. That poor Bristol, he's double-crossed us. Now don't worry about him. I'll find him if it is. Do you know where he's gone? No, but I know how to find out. How, sir? I'll tell you later, Hap. When they get these two characters back to Terra. Bristol, he's nothing but a... Uh, uh, a pirate? Yes. That's it. A low-down pirate. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, Space Patrollers, now's the time for a quick me up. Know what that is? It's a pick me up with Nestle's Quick. Yes, sir, when a fella's throat wants something cool and smooth, quick. Have some quick. Quick is Nestle's wonderful chocolate powder that makes milk taste like a million. In fact, it turns out chocolate milk is the same sensational flavor as your favorite Nestle's chocolate bar. Mmm, that's real terrific chocolate. Rich, smooth, and plenty delicious. And Nestle's Quick is such a cinch because it practically makes itself. After you pour yourself a glass of milk, just add two spoonfuls of Quick. It starts to mix itself. And you just pop it along with a little stir. Then taste it. See if you don't agree with all us space patrollers. There's nothing like a delicious Quick me up. Ask Mom to get you some Nestle's Quick in the brown and yellow can. And now, a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Abby have entered a laboratory on the planet Mars to capture a criminal. With ray guns drawn, they advance toward their foe, who suddenly darts behind a high-frequency generator. He's trying to get out the door, Commander. After him, Hap, before he gets away. Yes, sir. I can't move. We're in a high-voltage field. Throw down your gun. I can't. Be with us again next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story... Voyage to the Future! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Bela Kovach, and Tony Side. Dick Dufel speaking. This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant photo. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's Chocolate Bar. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of...